You guys, it's time for Summer Wayne! <laughs> Hello everyone, how are we doing? I am gonna be vlogging Summerween. I'm so excited. If you don't know, Summerween is a readathon hosted by Gabby Reads and Olivia Reads a Latte every year, where the idea is that we read like spooky autumnal books in summer. I have never fully participated. Every year I've kind of like half participated and like scheduled other vlogs that kind of fit the theme at the same time as Summerween, so I feel like I was involved. This year, we're doing three vlogs, okay? I'm gonna have a vlog with day one and two, then a vlog with three and four, and then a final vlog with days five, six, and seven, and I'm so excited. I just feel like I need to read horrors, thrillers, maybe some mysteries, like I'm so ready for this. I'm so ready. <laughs> So this first vlog today, we're starting day one. I'm so excited. I feel like I don't do enough readathons and I feel like readathons are such a fun way for the community to feel, I don't know, together and united. Other days this week, we might be doing like fun stuff, like fun activities. Today, Friday, the 7th, the first day, <laughs> we're just reading. We are reading, we are reading, we are reading. I the way I am going to read your ass on Summerween. I want to have a great start to the readathon. I maybe want to read like a whole book today. It's the aim of the game. It's like already 11 o'clock. Don't talk to me. It's been a late start to the day. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to the rest of the day. So let's go figure out what we're going to read, what our TBR is, because I haven't, I've purposely left it to the start of the readathon so we can do it together. Okay, so for what we're going to be reading, I, where have I put my phone? <laughs> <laughs> where, where have I put it? Hang on. Is it there? Oh, it's there. I watched the announcement video when it came out for Summerween and I did look at the prompts then, but I've purposely forgotten them because I wanted to like figure this out with you in this video, okay? So I can't remember what the prompts are gonna be. Let's talk about first the books that I would like to read and then we'll see if any of them fit prompts. So in terms of the books that I put on TBR Cluedo this month that I have to read, we have got The Writing Retreat by Julia Bart. If this fits one of the prompts, we're reading this first, okay? I am so excited for The Writing Retreat. I've been waiting to read it for so long. I know we just got this writing retreat and it turns deadly. It's about female friendships. I've heard it's wild. I'm ready. I'm so excited. So we've got that. Also on TBR Cluedo was Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. My general idea with this, because this is short stories, kind of horror based short stories. It's not too long. It's like 240 pages. How many short stories are there? Because that will figure out, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's eight short stories. Okay. So we could read like one a day and one day we'll just read two. Maybe today we'll read two short stories from this and we'll check in with what I thought of the short short stories in this every day. And then I also put on there, I think I got a prompt for like a 2022 release horror. And I said I would read either Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield or What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. So we'll be reading one of these during, I just like to cut my lip. <laughs> I feel very attacked. Relax. We'll be reading one of these during Summerween. I don't know which one, maybe if one fits the prompts. Then other books I would like to read. <laughs> a lot here guys. I just, if you missed my vlog where I went book shopping in London, go check it out because I, I love I love a good book shopping in London video. I picked up Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I think this would be a really good readathon read. This is set like in an Ikea-esque place and I showed in the video, I don't know if you guys have seen, but like it looks like an Ikea catalogue. How cool is that? I'm, oh, it's, it's, cute. Cute. It's, it's cute. cute. It's cute. I don't know what to it's tell cute. you. It's always good to read a book when you've just bought it because I don't do that enough. <laughs> And then, guys, there's more. One of my patrons, Charlie, very kindly gifted me two books lately, and I think they'd be both be perfect for some reason. Firstly, we've got You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Barron. I'm almost certainly gonna read this in Summerween, guys. It's short, it's like a fun, quick, YA horror slasher, final girl camp kind of vibes. Ah, I'm so excited. So that was so kind of Charlie to get. And then Charlie, like a couple days later, also got me. <laughs> the only one left by Rosie. <laughs> I don't know if I'm quite ready to read this yet because she literally got it for me like yesterday and um, I'm, I just don't know if I'm prepared. I don't know if I've mentally prepared myself for this one. So, is that everything or have I forgotten everything? Anything? I don't think so. So, <laughs> this is already excessive. So, we have got... <laughs> How many books is that? That's like just my initial vibe. TBR 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Are we going to read seven books in seven days? I don't know if we're quite aiming for that, guys. <laughs> so let's pull up the prompts for the readathon, and that will determine maybe what we read first. Because my aim of this is to hit all the prompts, and then after that, we can just read any horror thriller 
mystery that we want. You know, I'm leaning towards like horrors and thrillers is kind of the vibe for Summerween for me. Okay, number one, read a book in the dark or at night. So that can be any book. We'll do that tonight because Tom's away tonight. So it's easy for me to film when he's not here. So we'll do that tonight. Maybe we'll listen to an audiobook or something. I have an audiobooks for quite a lot of these, I think, on script. Two, read a thriller. Okay, I think we're going to start today with The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I feel like we could read this in a day if I get sucked in. It's only 300 pages. I do have the audiobook for this. But I think I'm gonna, I will ask on my patron, because a lot of them have read this, but um, I think I would like to read it physically. So maybe we'll start off reading it physically. So that's what we're gonna read first, to tick off that prompt. Read a book set in the fall. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how, I'd have to find out. Okay, let's see. This one we won't count because that can, like, that will be set in various times. This one is a summer camp, so not that one. Um, how do I know if any of these are set <laughs> Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. I don't know. We'll have to find that one. I'll come back to you on that. I'll go do some research. <laughs> Read a book with orange or black on the cover. Okay. That's like red, isn't it? That's not orange. We've got red and yellow. There's like black shadows. Oh, what moves the dead? There's, that's like a lot of black. Maybe we'll go with what moves the dead. That's a good readathon pick. Read a manga, graphic novel, or novella. Oh, okay, we've got problems here. I don't want to double up on prompts. <laughs> Would fangs be good? This is like a love story between a vampire and a werewolf, but I feel like it fits the Summerween vibes of like dark, autumnal. Like, I feel like it fits those vibes. So maybe we'll read fangs. I know, oh, hang on. Orange or black on the cover? Because otherwise we could count this as a novella because it is a novella. Um... I mean, that has black on the cover. <laughs> it's just not overwhelmingly black. I mean, could we count this? <laughs> the whole hair's black and the shadows are black. Maybe I'll go for that one. I think that counts. Her hair's black, the shadows are black. I'm gonna go for that one. Okay, for what we're hitting off, read a book in the dark or at night can be anything. I'll allow myself for that one because it's like, a circumstance, not a book. I can like say, read this in the darker at night tonight if we like haven't finished this yet. So I'll allow myself to double up. Read a thriller is that. Read a book set in the fall we don't yet know. Read a book with orange or black on the cover this one. Read a novella is this one. So there are definites and everything else. I mean, we've got to find out if any of these ones are set in the fall, but yeah, there are definites. And I'm gonna start with the writing retreat. So I'm gonna go sit out in the garden. It is hot, hot, hot. It's very hot today. So let's go sit out in the garden and make a start on this. I'll check in maybe when, I'm, when I've read the first 100 pages. Oh, also, I forgot to say, hang on. <laughs> One sec. I've got to say, Taylor's version, Speak Now, got released today. Well, today is going to be the best day ever. If you don't know me, Speak Now was my shit as a child. If you don't know me, I love Taylor Swift. Last year, Taylor Swift was my number one artist on Spotify. I'm not trying to get tickets to Taylor Swift because I feel like my favorite Taylor Swift songs are not what she's singing on tour. Okay, that's a whole other thing. But my favorite albums are Fearless, Speak Now, Folklore, Evermore. That's who I am. I don't really like any of her other albums, okay? I love Speak Now with my whole heart. It's probably my favorite Taylor Swift album. It's the one I definitely have the most nostalgic connection to. So I need to listen to that today, but we're gonna, I gotta get some reading done first, okay? Maybe some editing of this vlog. I'm like holding it. I'm like keeping it for myself as a treat. Like, <laughs> I'm like dangling the carrot. <laughs> Anyways, let's go start the writing retreat. Watching you was such a thrill 
Okay, I'm just having a quick lunch. Um, you can probably hear Judge Judy in the background because my mum watches a lot of Judge Judy. I got some quick spag bottle. Yes, it's a lot of cheese, okay? It was just frozen food that it would take me no time to make. So I'm gonna have spag bowl. I'm only like 50 pages in. I'll check in with you when I've read another 50 pages, but like, I have good feelings so far. Okay, we have read our first 100 pages of the readathon. It's going great. It's going great. I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. I'm feeling gorgeous, you know? <laughs> I am on page 97. So technically we haven't read our first 100 pages, but we're almost there. And guys, I think I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> Gagatrandra. I'm really enjoying the start of this book. Here's the thing. I have, throughout the month, been adamant. I have stuck to my guts that I'm gonna love this. Everyone has been like, oh, you know, it's a bit hit or miss and it goes a bit crazy and whatever. And I've stuck to my guts that I'm gonna love it. And I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. This is a great first pick for the readathon. It's only 300 pages. So you feel like you've read like a novel, but like it's not too long a novel. Oh. And it's a new release, which I need to get better at reading new releases because I just haven't been the best at it. Also, I keep using dust jackets as bookmarks. I need to stop doing it. It's a habit I've gotten into and I don't like it. So anyways, our main character, Alex, basically gets invited to this writing retreat held by her idol. This author who, you know, she's been around since the 90s and she's kind of renowned for writing like dark, weird, sexy stuff, you know, that kind of like pushes boundaries, a little bit strange. I can get real dark, well, we all know. And actually, I don't think everyone knows the extent of my darkness. Like, I can get dark. And Alex loves her girl. She loves her. <laughs> and she gets a final writing retreat, but so does her recent ex-best friend, Ren. So they were like really, 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 really close. And then they had like a falling out a year ago and Alex hasn't been able to write since. And every time she sees Ren, she like wants to throw up. She like stalks her on social media. So I already know it's gonna be, and it's already starting to like, you know, I don't wanna spoil anything for anyone, but like their relationship is gonna be intense. <laughs> Let's just say that with many layers to it. And as someone who's experienced relationships like that in the past that have ended, like that is, that is, uh, Julia Bartz is doing something, you know, there's ample stuff to go into. Like female friendships, when they get intense, can get intense. <laughs> so I feel like I'm excited. This is going to be a good dramatized version of it, but I'm excited to see where it's going to go. And I'm really enjoying the writing. I think the setting we're at the author's house and it's isolated and it's this old house and there's like history of perhaps like seances and demons <laughs> that have murdered people. And I just think it's really fun. And we're starting to get excerpts of the book that our main character is writing because basically they have a month to write a book and they have to help edit each other's and one of them will get chosen for a million dollar advance, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> And I'm really just enjoying like the darkness of it. It's kind of like sexy darkness. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, oh, you know, it's been a bit raunchy. <laughs> it's, it's got a little, little hint, a little bit spice to it. So I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna go read another 100 pages. God, the reason going great already, everyone. Wowza, I'm so ready. I feel like when by the next time I check in with you, the craziness will have begun. And I'm just so ready. I think the atmosphere is great. I'm really enjoying the writing. The fact that this is a debut, it feels very, I was thinking it feels very layered. Like the book I already know is gonna go certain places that I don't expect. And it feels very layered for a debut. So anyways, I'll go read another 100 pages. And then we'll check in with you. This is the reading reading day, guys. We're gonna get so much reading done today. <laughs> okay, I am on page 194. So I didn't quite get to page 200, but I wanted to check in before my parents got back and everyone is in this room. We've got to have a bit of variety. I'm trying to get better at filming around the house, but like, there's always someone at home with me. Like, I'm never home alone. There's five of us in the house. We're always, there's always someone in every room other than my bedroom. And usually Tom's there as well and I just have to kick him out when I want to film. Um, anyways, I'm still loving it. At the moment, it's a five star. <laughs> I feel like, I sound like a crazy person because so many people have had mixed, you know, it's got like a 3.4 average rating or something on Goodreads, but I'm, I'm eating it up. It's giving me, it's giving. Let me tell you what it's giving. It's giving Catherine House meets Bunny with like a literary twist. And I, it's like giving me what I loved about Catherine House, like that unsettling, like the kind of this, characters going to this idyllic place that is encapsulates all of their hopes and dreams. You know, cat and house, people have dreamt of academia, of the greatest levels of academia. In this, it's their literary hero and they are obsessed with her and they love her. And then like, <laughs> things starting to twist and become a bit strange and reality starting to shift. And like a main character who's kind of like 
intrigued by whatever the weird stuff that's going on, but it's also kind of like above it and a bit aloof. Like it's kind of the same thing. I feel like it was Catherine House on the inspo board. Was on the Pinterest board, Julia. <laughs> so yeah, and it's got that kind of like bunny group of girls, women, female relationships. And I'm really enjoying the way it's tackling those. Um, but I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. The one thing I will say about this is that I feel like it's quite ugly would be the way that I describe it. And I think the way that it's tackling certain issues and topics and feelings and emotions is kind of ugly. And I feel like it's gonna get uglier. And by that, I just mean, I think the way it handles certain things on certain topics, some people might be like, oh, I don't like that. Like, I don't like the way it's portraying that thing or the way it's talking about the feelings that arise from that happening, but it's kind of like looking at it through this like ugly, distorted, kind of grim, fucked up lens, you know? And I'm really enjoying it. There's also like, it's there's been a lot of sex dreams and sex hallucinations, guys. I just wasn't expecting that. But it's kind of like, although they're weird and like fucked up, <laughs> I feel like it's, um, how do I say this? <laughs> That is sounding weird. They're like, you can tell a woman's written them because they're like weird in a way that only a woman would write sex scenes. Particularly they're quite queer. Let's just say that. I mean, there's levels to it, but like <laughs> they're quite queer, the sex scenes. And I feel like if a man were to have written these, it would be weird, but not in a good way, but they're kind of weird in like a feminine, fucked up womanly way. I don't know. I feel like they get to like the darkness of being a woman that no one wants to talk about. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying I personally identify with these scenes. I just think there's like a darkness to them that I haven't seen written about a lot before and I'm trying to place it. But anyways, I'm really enjoying it. Now I'm gonna try and read the last 100 pages for tonight when it's dark. So the plan is now I'm gonna go edit what you've seen so far in the vlog. And then I will probably play a bit of Cozy Grove whilst listening to some Speak Now. Cause I'm seeing everyone talk on it on like Instagram and threads. I've joined threads guys. Like, okay, I'm actually quite enjoying it. I'm enjoying threads. I don't tweet anymore. I'm always on Twitter, but I don't tweet. Cause I just felt like I don't know. I feel like people weren't interested in what I had to say anymore. I just didn't like shit post. I used to shit post a lot. Is that the right word? Where you just like chat about anything? Like, you, just, oh, you know, any thought that came to mind, I used to tweet it when I was younger. And I feel like when I started this Twitter account, but then I just became a bit more like reserved. Um, but I feel like I might chat on threads. Why not? Let's see. Follow me on threads, guys. If you, <laughs> if you have it. Anyways, I'm gonna go edit and I'll see you when it's time to listen to some speak now because I'm getting major FOMO and I just need it. It's time. <laughs> it's time. So it is still light outside as you guys can kind of see. The sun is setting. So like we're almost there. It's nine o'clock on the dot. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I reached the point in the day where I'm delusional and delirious. Um, so I'm gonna give myself like 45 minutes? I won't finish the album. How long is the album? How long is Speak Now Taylor's version, Taylor? Dear God, an hour and 45 minutes. <sighs> Dear God. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna give myself like 45 minutes to listen. So you won't finish the album, but I'll listen to the rest of it tomorrow and play Cozy Grove. My love, my life, the fire in my life, the joy in my life, the best thing in my life, Cozy Grove. So let's... Should we begin? Oh my God, I'm so, wow. 10 year old Megan. <gasps> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. My God, what a moment.
I listened for a little bit longer. This is a mess than I was supposed to. I got up to long live. I was going to stop on last kiss, but then last kiss is like long live isn't really a starting tomorrow song. It's an ending the day song. You know, it's like the last song of the concert. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> reviews. You know, it's amazing. Like, you know, it's going to be great. She, she slapped with Dear John. Here's the thing. Dear John was always one of my favourites. Dear John and Last Kiss. I love the long, sad ones. <laughs> but like, Dear John, she went into a meeting with the president of the Disney Channel and said, I want to make history. Like, <laughs> the reason she, at the concert a while ago, was like, please be nice to everyone. Because she knew she went into that studio and cooked up something with that Dear John re-record. And she knew it was going to reignite the feelings, because it did for me. He is enemy number one in the Taylor Swift universe. The Taylor Swift megaverse, whatever. <laughs> All too well, yeah, whatever. But Dear John... You know. So, <laughs> tomorrow we'll listen to ours on Superman, and then the Vault tracks tomorrow. I'm... It's dark outside. Hello. Well, it's so dark out there, you can't see. <laughs> So I'm going to turn the lights off. I think in a bit I'll turn the lights off. I'll read a little bit more. Then I will turn the lights off and I will just have my reading light on from Serious Readers. So we'll just have that light on, but everything else will be in the dark and we are finishing this. Hopefully I won't be too tired to check in with you on my final thoughts on this before I go to sleep. Taste that. It's a five star. <laughs> we did it! Yes! We've won! Yes! 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 <laughs> we won! I can't believe it! Listen, guys, it's late. It's like half past midnight. And I gotta be trying to be quiet because my brother's asleep. <laughs> but it's five stars. It's five stars. I knew it all along. I knew it. I'm like, I'm psychic. <laughs> I loved it. I think it's impeccable. Uh, Julia Bartz, the woman that you are, wow. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> I can understand why some people don't like this. I can understand. It goes there, it's a little bit weird. The ending, there's like, you know. Whew, there's a few things there at the ending that make you go, go, oh, okay, wow. We've ended up here, okay. <laughs> You know, kind of like Catherine House, although I think this has more um, solid footing, shall we say, than Catherine House. But I love Catherine House, everyone says Catherine House. But it reminds me a lot of that. It reminds me a lot of how I felt reading Catherine House. I loved the descent into madness that everyone has said that this has. I won't tell you anything other than that. Just know it gets crazy, you know? But yeah, I loved it. And I'm loving this trend. I need to read all the other books where it's like books about books and writing. Like we've got this, we've got The Last Word by Ted Adams, we've got Yellow Face Bar of Kwang. Like I'm just. I love it. I find this stuff so interesting. The fact that this is a debut, I mean, Catherine House was debut. I mean, this is unrelated to this, but there's never been any other news about another book from Elizabeth Thomas, and I just, like, hope and pray. Like, it keeps me up at night. Like, will Elizabeth Thomas ever write another book? Anyways, everything I've said in the rest of the video stands, the way it examines female relationships, the way it examines passion for writing, the way it examines, like, the craft of an, of an art form and the obsession with that. There's so much. I mean, it's late. <laughs> But with reading this, guys, we ticked off two of the five prompts today. I'm actually astounded with myself. I'm actually incredible. We've ticked off read a thriller and we've ticked off read a book in the dark. I I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be <laughs> reading a lot of audiobooks. So I thought it was best. It, it was in the dark. The camera really, my camera does a great job of picking up light. So when I read with the serious light in the pitch black it still does a pretty good job of like making it look like the room is more light than it is but it was like i was in the pitch black apart from that light to like enable me to actually see the words on the page okay i would recommend this to everyone and that's a bold statement because <laughs> i think 
a lot of you won't like it. But I want to recommend it to everyone because I just think everyone should experience it. Everyone should see what it's like. Everyone should give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a go, bro. Give it a go. So yeah, I'd love to hear all your opinions on it, but I loved it and I knew I would and I'm a genius and I'm psychic and I'm never wrong. It's the trove. Tomorrow might be a bit less of a reading day, we'll see. I didn't read the short story I was supposed to read from Her Body and Other Parties today, so I'll have to get caught up on that at some point. But um, yeah, I don't know what my plans are for tomorrow yet. Maybe go for a walk at some point in the day. Um, but yeah, tomorrow probably be a bit of a lighter reading day than today was, but what a success we've started off on, guys. I am so happy. <laughs> Good morning. It's day two of Summerween. I'm tired. I was up until <laughs> last night. Tom got home just after I spoke to you in the last clip and then he was like, should we go to McDonald's? So we went to McDonald's. I didn't go to sleep until like two in the morning. I've got a headache. <laughs> Anyways, this morning I have read the first three short stories of Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. So I'm now caught up with the rest of the readathon. I'm just gonna read one a day, basically. I don't know if I'll update you after every single short story. Maybe I'll update you just like once in every vlog on my thoughts. I'm really enjoying this. I feel like there's a running theme in what I'm reading. It's like dark sex. <laughs> like, I don't know, strange sex in books. <laughs> That's what I'm reading a lot of. It's been a bit saucy. So I've read the first three, which were The Husband Stitch, which I would give a five star. I need to tab these actually in my ratings. Inventory, which I probably would give a four. And then Mothers, I would give a three, I think is my rating of the one so far. But I think the writing in this like is incredible. I can already tell that Carmen Machado is like, I, I have in the dream house as well, but I haven't read it. And I can already tell that she is perhaps one of the greatest writers to ever exist. <laughs> I might give this a four. Like I, you know, we've already given it a five, four and a three in terms of my enjoyment of the short stories. But in terms of writing craft and writing ability and like levels to what we're talking about here, I feel like perhaps the best. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. I actually read a review. I read Roxanne Gay's review on Goodreads. And I think this is basically all I need to say. Like, I already, I'm only 60 pages into this. Her review says, her extraordinary voice beautifully binds these stories about fading women and the end of the world and men who want more when they've been given everything and bodies, so many human bodies taking up space and straining against the seams of skin in impossible, imperfect and unforgettable ways. So I feel like that just, it sums it up. <laughs> It sums it up, the vibe. The next short story I'm really excited to read because it is, I heard Mara speak about this. I think it's just like reviews of all different episodes of Law and Order SVU, <laughs> which stuff like that is my favorite thing to read. My favorite, still to this day, I love Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, one of my favorite essay collections I've ever read. But my favorite one, you know, it's in amongst all these beautiful essays about race, about gender, about politics, about class. My favorite one in there is still her talking about her love for Scribble. <laughs> I love short stories and essays about someone's obsession with something that seems mundane, but I just like eat it up. So the rest of the readathon, we'll just be reading one short story from here a day. And then that's like good way to like kind of read another book without thinking about it. Maybe we'll read eight books in seven days. I don't think that's gonna happen. Don't say that. Mona, don't ever say that. I think today, because I'm going out for a walk now, it's already like 12 o'clock, we'll go out for the walk for the afternoon. So I'm only gonna be reading really like late this afternoon and this evening. But I think I'm gonna pick up What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I don't know a ton about this. I know it is a retelling of one of Edgar Allan Poe's short stories, but this is gonna be my first T. Kingfisher. I own three. I own this, A House of Good Bones, and Nettle and Bone. House of Good Bones and Nettle and Bone? She has two bone books. <laughs> This is probably out of the three, now the one I was like, I'm least excited to read. I have, well, I'm still really, really excited to read it, but like those other two, I'm super duper excited to read. They're like some of my most anticipated books. So you may be thinking, Megan, why are you reading this one? It's because it's a novella, okay? <laughs> it fits the prompt. And I had in TBR Cluedo, I had to read a 2022 release. So I think that might be a good way to like judge T. King Fisher as I, I'm coming at this with like my least excited for her so it can only get better from here. So anyways, we're gonna go for a walk. I don't know if I'll check in with you before finishing this. It's really short, it's only 160 pages. Maybe I'll check in about halfway through, but we're going for the walk now. So I'll read afterwards when I get back. <laughs> Full stop Can't believe I live in your thoughts about you all the time morning evening and midnight such 
such a wonderful delight For go Give up everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden If I'm honest You're the leaves in mid-August And I've come out here to say That I love you ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay guys <laughs> I'm aware we're looking bedraggled I had a nice walk It did rain but it was like a good rain It was like so muggy and hot today and the rain just kind of like cooled everything down. So it was a nice rain. But yeah, we had a nice walk. But then I came home and I fell asleep. <laughs> it's tired, okay? So I'm only just now halfway through What Moves the Dead. It is 6.45. It's not terrible. But I also want to edit day two tonight. <laughs> Trying and keeping on top of the editing as much as I can. So vague synopsis is we're following Alex, who's a retired soldier. And they go to their friend Madeline's house. Uh, her and her brother live there and she's like dying. She's like, you know, she's not looking good. It's not looking good for old Maddie <laughs> out here. There's something weird about the house. There's something weird about the surroundings of the house. The first scene that we have is Alex talking to a local woman about these fungi and about these mushrooms that grow and like how they, how bad they smell. There's just something like off. But not funny, haha. -ha. Funny, weird. And I feel like that's all you should really know going into this because obviously it's quite short. So I don't really want to tell you about stuff that's just happening now halfway through. I'm really enjoying this. This is obviously my first T. Kingfisher, like I said. I'm really loving the writing. It's got this like, I feel like, okay. <laughs> I feel like T. Kingfisher's books all, from my understanding, will have a slightly different writing style. She dabbles, you know, like here, there and everywhere in the styles that she's publishing in. But this one has got like a wry sense of humour to it. It's got this, yeah, this kind of like dark humor i don't know nods to the reader i don't know i don't know how to describe it because it's very faint it's not like over you know some books are like dear reader then this happened it's not like that but it's just i'm it, it's written with a slight grin it's like impish grin shall we say another thing about this is that alex is uh gender non-conforming i don't know what the right term would be from my understanding i don't think i read because i was listening just the audiobook at this section but where they're from has like a different um like classification of gender with like new different kinds of pronouns so yeah i guess alex is like gender non-binary or something like that yeah it doesn't really play into the story but just anyone who looks out for that kind of rep i thought i should let you know because it's not something that i knew before going into this i feel like it's gonna get gross all the mush- I'm talking about mushrooms, bro. I'm talking about mushrooms. I've dealt with mushrooms in some books. <laughs> in some horror books. What is it about mushrooms and horror books? Why are horror authors drawn to mushrooms? I guess because mushrooms are kind of gross. And we never know which ones are, like, gonna, you know, kill us off. Evil mushrooms when they see humans. Death to all of them. Oh, at the moment, I'm really enjoying it. It doesn't feel like a five star, but I feel like this is the kind of book that leads up to an ending. You know, it's a short novella, and I feel like it's not necessarily about how you feel about it halfway through. It's about what it leads up to and ends at. So anyways, I'm going to go finish it. <laughs> And then I'll see you tonight to wrap up day two. I I'm going to be really proud of myself to have read two and a bit books in two days. I think that's pretty good. So anyways, I'll see you in like an hour. I think it would take me to finish it with my final thoughts. Okie dokie. <laughs> Hello friends. I just finished What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. And I'm going to give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. It just wasn't five star for me but that's okay I didn't expect necessarily this to be five stars but I loved how it built I thought like I said to you in that midway check-in like it was a bit of a difficult book for me to judge midway through but I loved how it built to the ending and the little reveals it's a short book right it's not trying to do loads when you compare this to another fungi book that it directly references which is Mexican Gothic Mexican Gothic has a lot more layers to it it's a longer book this is short but I loved how it was done I loved how you know the horror mechanisms work what do I mean by that I love how <laughs> the magic system for lack of a better word like the rules of 
the horror how it worked. Does that make sense? No. I loved the ending. I thought it was just a really satisfying, good horror read. And I'm glad that I've begun my T. Kingfisher journey. And I think this was a good one to start with, like I said, because I kind of went into it with no expectations. If I would read Nettle and Bone or A House with Good Bones and like really not liked it or been disappointed, like that would have put me on shaky ground. Whereas I feel like this was just like a little teaser, like a little good introduction to T. Kingfisher. And then I did actually go ahead and read um, The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. I listened to the audiobook just so I made dinner. It's really, really short. And I didn't necessarily read it for like my enjoyment of the thing itself because, you know, it is a classic which I... I feel like I have really enjoyed classics in the past, but just in my current reading at the moment, I don't read a lot of them. And so I feel like my brain isn't accustomed or tuned in. Sorry, my hair is looking a mess. Um, isn't accustomed or tuned into the way, like you have to, you have to read them in a certain way. Oh, this is, <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like you gotta like be used to the, what it's saying and the language or whatever. And I just, my brain isn't tuned into that right now, which is fine. I read it more to see what this had come from and kind of compare the two. And I just really enjoyed how this had expanded on what was in the original short story. If I had to rate it the original short story, I'd give it three. I think it's like a great horror short story. Considering it was published, I think in like 1830s, 1840s, it really stands up. I mean, the author's note at the end of this is really good. And I could see, you know, T.K. Fisher says, I liked this about the short story, I liked this about the short story. And I wanted to expand on this and expand on this. And it was just really interesting seeing that play out. But like, I'm glad I read it. So with this, we tick off the prompt, read, uh, manga graphic novel or novella, which I think is the final one. So, <laughs> I'm amazed by you. Are we happy? I'm so happy. Guys, in two days, we have read a novella, which was four stars, a novel, which was five stars, like obsessed, a short story, and then we've made good progress through a short story collection. I'm actually obsessed with myself. Like, what the hell? We've technically read three books. Like, like, let's count the House of Fall of the Fall. No, the Fall of the House of Asher, because it's counting on Goodreads. So we've read three things already. Three and a half, not half, but you know, three and a bit things in two days while still living my life. So I'm, I'm happy. So there we go, guys. That is the <laughs> end of this vlog of the first two days of Summerween. What a good way to start it off. So this will have gone out on Sunday, day three. The next vlog for days three and four will go out on Tuesday. These are the four books that were kind of like on our TBR. I don't know what I'm going to pick up next in the next vlog. I don't know. I'm still not sure if we're going to read The Only One Left in Summerween. I just feel like... In Summerween, you know, you're trying to, in any read, uh, readathon, you're trying to read books quite fast. And although this might lean itself to reading quite fast, I've heard nothing but incredible things. I just don't know if I want to feel like I have to rush it because I have heard such good things. Maybe we'll start this next. You're not supposed to die tonight. Fun slasher. I feel like that could be fun to read tomorrow. Probably we'll pick up Fangs at some point as well as a nice little graphic novel because I feel like that fits with the vibe as well. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. <laughs> I know it's quite long for a two day vlog, but I feel like I I've, I've had a great start to Summerween. So if you're participating in Summerween, let me know how you're enjoying it. I would love to know. Let me know what you've been reading. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've got on my TBR or that I've read in this vlog. Guys, the moral of the story of this vlog is the writing retreat actually slaps. <laughs> in my humble opinion. Anyways, guys, if you got to the video, leave a pumpkin emoji down below in the spirit of Summerween. And I will see you very soon in the next Summerween vlog. Bye.